they can't actually get out. <laughs> I just want to get out. Can you just get out, please? <laughs> <laughs> Langkawi is Malaysia's most popular island escape. Known for its coastline full of beautiful beaches and as a duty-free shopping haven with a reputation for good nightlife and affordable drinking. <laughs> but Langkawi surprised me with the sheer amount of things there are to do there. From the overcrowded hotspots to some amazing hidden gems. But is it actually as affordable as people make it out to be? In this video, I'm going to show you the best things we did with our three days on the island. And of course, how much it all costs. My name is Ryan and welcome back to the One Shot Adventures channel. Langkawi sits off the northwest coast of Malaysia and we made the trip over from Penang in the early morning. On this trip, I was joined by Emma as always, along with our friend Tony who came out to visit us for a few weeks. The ferry took around three hours and it cost us 80 ringgit each, which is quite a steep price to kick things off with. But let's take a look at the affordability once we were on the island. We stayed in the popular Chenang Beach area, a very touristy town set on a long white sand beach. To start things off, let's look at our accommodation, which was very good value. The Shell Out Hotel was only a five minute walk from the seafront, complete with swimming pool, and it cost us 50 pounds per night for a family villa, which really isn't much when you split it between three people. So far, so affordable. And the town itself is a busy sea of restaurants, bars, and duty-free shopping. But let's break down what the duty-free label actually means for travelers. Since the 1980s, Langkawi's duty-free status has attracted tourists from around the world, looking to buy anything from cheap alcohol to cigarettes, clothes, and toiletries. But this doesn't mean that everywhere charges duty-free prices. You need to head for the designated stores and shopping centers that are licensed to sell at those rates. So for the majority of your spending here, you won't always get amazing prices. Now, a big part of the appeal of Langkawi for me personally was how much people were telling me that the beer is really, really cheap. So, is it true? Outside of the duty-free stores, Alcohol is not really discounted in the bars and restaurants. Really, we found the prices to be about the same as Penang and other parts of Malaysia. In restaurants, you'll pay about five to eight ringgit for a bottle or a can, and a pitcher on the seafront cost me 35 ringgit. But make sure you keep an eye out for the happy hour drink steals on cocktails. Two for ones are very common on the Chenang walk. And there are even some places that will let you bring your own duty-free drinks inside. On average, eating out was about the same as Penang, with two courses coming in at about 20 ringgit per person. But for some cheaper eats, I recommend hunting down the traveling night market that moves around the island on each day of the week. It has loads of stalls with really affordable food options, all cooked up fresh in front of you. You can get rotis and curry puffs for as little as one ringgit each. And with the rotis, there are both sweet and savory options. And individual satay skewers are even less than that. So you can definitely eat like a king here. Chenang Beach is the place to come for nightlife and easy holiday vibes. But as far as beaches go, you can do a lot better on Langkawi. So we headed to the opposite side of the island in search of a real gem. This place is absolutely amazing. Definitely the best beach we've had on our trip so far. The white sand beach of Tan Young really is breathtaking. 
offering calm and clear blue waters with stunning views all around. And it all comes with a very welcome lack of people. You can rent sun beds for 25 ringgit each or just lay your towel down on the sand and enjoy this place for free. It's a sort of sandbar appearing here. The water's so clear. There are a few simple restaurants and shops on the road outside and we got lunch here for about five ringgit each. But for some contrast, let's go from a relatively hidden gem to whatever the opposite of a hidden gem is. Now, without a doubt, one of the most popular things to do in Langkawi is to take the cable car up to the sky bridge. The striking bridge sits 660 meters above sea level, offering amazing views over the island. But first, you need to get up there. As we made our way over, we knew that this place would be very busy, but for some reason, we didn't expect an actual theme park. The area at the base of the bridge is called the Oriental Village. And there are loads of rides and experiences here in a little colorful toy town. You should also expect a lot of queuing. We arrived at 11 a.m. and booked a ticket for the cable car and the basic package for a foreigner costs 55 ringgit per person, which is definitely not cheap. And because it was already so busy, they gave us a time slot to come back and queue for the cable car later on. Some of the other attractions of the village are also included in the price. So we passed the time in the 3D Art Museum, which is all about immersing yourself in different optical illusions to get some fun photos. Places like this aren't usually our scene, but it definitely passed the time. Finally, they called our time slot and we joined another queue. Eventually, we made it onto one of the cars. This section of cable car is actually the steepest in the world. And it really is quite an experience to see the mountains getting closer and closer, looking down on the lush rainforest below. At the top, there were some really nice views over the bay. You then have to jump onto another cable car where we got our first views of the sky bridge itself. At the end of this trip, you still haven't got to the bridge. In fact, you're met with another queue. So once the cable car gets to the top, you queue again to get tickets to get onto the sky bridge, which is another five ringgit if you choose to walk through the forest or you can pay 15 ringgit and you can get the funicular over. But it's so busy here, it's so expensive and you just spend most of your time queuing. The nature walk trail offers its own obstacles in the shape of some very bold monkeys. All right. Well, <laughs> but luckily, it doesn't take long to finally get to the bridge. And it really is quite amazing to walk along it. So it's now half past three in the afternoon. We got here at 11 in the morning. So we've been here for several hours and only about an hour of that time was actually up on the bridge and getting views. So as far as the whole experience goes, I'm saying you shouldn't bother with this. 
if you really want to get up to the bridge, my advice would be to get to the Oriental Village as early as possible. Book onto one of the first cable car slots and hopefully avoid those queues because it is actually a very cool place. Luckily, our day was about to be saved by something right around the corner. Just a 15 minute walk from the Oriental Village or a five minute cab drive if you're lazy like us, you can get to the Seven Wells Waterfall, which is just through this rainforest path. This place holds a little secret beyond the falls and it's completely free to enter. There are a lot of steep steps to get up there and you'll need to watch out for monkeys again. These ones were really territorial and they wouldn't even let Tony past. <laughs> past the entrance to the waterfall and right at the top of the steps, you end up right on top of the falls where you'll find a group of natural stone swimming pools. This is a really relaxing spot for taking a swim in the fresh water and you can paddle right over to the edge of the falls to get some views over the rainforest. But be warned, trying to get out of these stone baths is not the easiest thing to do. It's so slippery in the pools that Emma and Tony cannot... <laughs> oh my God! They can't actually get out. <laughs> I just want to get out. Can you just get out please? The real star of the show up here is another attraction formed by nature, which made for hours of fun. Best thing about this place, natural water slide. This place is just awesome. Not too busy, natural water slides. So much fun. Definitely makes up for what we went through this morning. In the end, we really enjoyed our time in Langkawi. And the best things we did were completely free. We were supposed to take the ferry back to Penang after this, but instead, we chose to be a little bit spontaneous taking a boat to a tiny, tiny paradise. In fact, we ended up back in Thailand. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.